know, one of the things, I'll give a lot of tidbits on the culture of startup, not just the process of startup. If you're meeting an investor and you get three minutes and you walk in one minute late and you stand in the door, what do you think the investor will do? You get only three minutes in a shark tank for an investor. So this is, get used to be here on time because if you, if you eat up one minute of your three minutes because you're late, you're out. Business is ruthless, huh? it can be very ruthless. All right, we'll start with a little bit of recap. All of you are there in the first class, so you can just look at it. I'm not going to read it. I think if you have to take one slide away, I think if you remember one slide, I'm not going to repeat it. If you remember one slide, this is the course faculty. And starting today, we'll start doing role plays. I'm not going to repeat it. You can read it. It's up there. Evaluation, 25% will be on team assignments. Team assignments happen now. You will do team assignments starting now. <laughs> You'll see that. There are two presentations, business presentations, no credit for PowerPoint, and then 25% for an end term written exam. That's the evaluation, so all of you know. This is the process that we'll learn. And you'll see, discover. This is the second class. You'll see that this is how we'll go step by step by step starting today. Okay, we'll go step by step. You'll get warmed up today. Slowly, you'll start getting warmed up. And you'll go till the, in November, you'll come up with an investor pitch. Believe it or not. By November, you'll have an investor pitch. Trust me. The more important thing is the mindset. It's not that the process, you can master the process and not be able to do a startup. So it's the mindset of business. Okay, you are in business. You are in a business class. There is no credit for PowerPoints, or memory and textbooks, etc. You are here for business. So we'll talk that. And you will get into it starting tonight in terms of activities with real customers. So today you will start talking to customers. In the last class, we talked about the personal brand. So what's your name? Okay, Sudhansh. So Sudhansh is also a brand. Okay. So all of you are brands, like it or not, believe it or not. Burgess, like it or not, people perceive you as a brand. Not in the sense of a biscuit or a, you know, Coca-Cola, but you are perceived as a brand by Ajit or Amit or Professor Kavi <laughs> or Deepa. Unknowingly, you are creating a brand. All that I'm saying is you make it more tacit in the sense of bring it out. Teams, teams have been formed. Okay. If you are not in a team, one of the business rules, if you want to be a founder is to be able to attract team members. If you can't attract team members, how will you do a you know, startup? You may be, you know, JE rank one and you, can't, and you can't get anybody to work with you. What happens then? You have to get people to work with you, no? Sir? Yes or no? Yes. So you have to be able to attract people, attract people to work for you. So we'll announce the teams. All right. Now, before we get, we'll start the work now. So for, now we start getting serious. Up till now, it was introductions and all of that. So I need two volunteers. Anybody from eCell here? I'll give you a task and we'll role play it. So the, here's the task. You are in eCell. You are in terms of raising money. Okay. And you have to raise 1 lakh rupees from Nidhi. Nidhi represents a large company and you have to raise money. You have to sell eSell even to her. All right. You've got one minute to make your pitch. Hi Nidhi, this is Tejas. Uh, I'm from uh, Entrepreneurship Cell. Uh, so Entrepreneurship Cell, uh, as you might or may not know, uh, let me just tell you about it. It's Asia's largest uh, entrepreneurship promoting body by students. So I just wanted to uh, ask you like what your company do. Mm, we are into uh, creating new products, uh, new user products especially in electricity and all that, yeah, uh, alarms and uh, these thermostats, etc. Uh, since you are uh, in uh, making new products, so you might need a test audience, right? Yes. yes. So have you ever explored a real audience wi uh, while using for uh, to test your products? We already have identified audience, you know, because we keep testing these products. So we, before we even start the product, we already have an but have you taken views from audience to test it? Of course, that's the part of the test. Uh, so there might be a case where you have just exposed only one part of audience. So you might be needing more audience. We are a pretty small team, so we are not 
pretty mature organization and you know we test during each and every phase so we have identified audience targeted audience not targeted audience and we do a lot of testing with that but but if you can you know rather than asking our process if you can define your your value statement that would be really time out no that's okay because we'll have many such mini role plays and they will all be maybe one to two minutes but first of all let's give them a big hand huh? Good. Thank you, Nidhi. So, Nishant, what do you think he did well? Find that what on e cell can provide, and then accordingly he was okay. Pitching. So, hold that. So, what his interpretation is at all points in time, you had e cell at the back of your mind that I have to sell e cell. Okay, but good. Hold that thought. Let's move on. What percentage of startups succeed? Very low. Why? Why do you think startups fail? 95% fail. Why do they fail? Incorrect projections. Okay, very good. Sir, why do you think startups fail? Lack of resources. Burgess, why do you think startups fail? Incorrect target on Jasper. Why do you think startups fail? Okay, so let's look at it's not just a startup problem. Even established companies, the companies you will queue will be waiting, interviewing for jobs. Okay, they also fail in the product launches. They're big companies, huh? Look at the failure rate. What is the failure rate? It's not 5%. Startups is 5%. Established companies is 99.9% .9 fail. This is in Nielsen data over five years. Only 23 out of 16,914 succeeded. So if you're failing, you're in good company. So business failing is very common. It's very common to fail in business. You see the number, right? Startup numbers and real business. So it's, this is not an IIT class. This is not about, you know, if I get a CGP of five, end of the road, you know, I get into, it's very common to, you know, in fact, the exception is success. So get used to this kind of failure rates. Why do they fail? So why do startups fail? Here's some data. And remember, a startup could also be a new initiative in IIT. A startup could be a new center. A startup could be a new project in IIT. So, sir, why do you think startups will fail? Change in the market. Changes in the market. So if you look at the first point, no market need. 42%. So what happens is you do a PhD thesis, Dr. Lalit, where is ah. You do a PhD thesis, you do a BTEC thesis, you do a BTEC project and because you have done it and you publish the paper, you think there is a demand for it. There may not be, no. Your professor has given you a task. This competition or something you have to make it global. You have to go and get a million people. <laughs> Doesn't mean that you will get a million people. So there may be no demand for it. So the first risk is that don't make brilliant products which don't sell ran out of cash when do you run out of cash huh. you don't get enough money uh, you don't get enough money or your customers are not buying a product not the right team which is why team building is so important working in team so what happens is our education system rewards individual brilliance so class 1 to class 10 first boy first girl second boy second girl you know je je rank cpi everything is how brilliant you are and sometimes you know, you get into the wrong behavior. I'll not share with him. I'll not show it to him. For me to be first, I have to do something so that he can, you know. That's not a business practice. So you have to learn to work in team. So you can work with your vendors, you know, your, your employees, your investors and so on. You can read the rest of it. Get out competed. Your competitors are better than you. Pricing, your pricing is wrong. So let's have a look at this. How many of you will buy this at 5 rupees? this box. Will you buy this at 5 rupees? How many of you will buy this as 50 rupees? You will buy. How many of you will buy it at 5000 rupees? Can there be a situation when you buy it at 5000? Can there be? Okay, it could be a sign of or you have to go to the toilet and there's nothing. What do you do? There's no water. What do you do? So, the, so we'll talk that. We know what is value versus price. Where does engineering come in? Electrical engineering, civil engineering, metallurgical engineering, computer science engineering, anywhere but in IIT there is so much in our education system there is so much about IIT Bombay, IIT Madras, IIT this and IIT ranking anything does the customer really care about which IIT which department which NIT what is the NIRF ranking so when you are studying these matters so in business this is what matters so our course will take you through this okay so we'll, we'll, we'll teach you how to handle some of these what skills should a founder develop so this is the hard part of it this is the process part of it. This is the process part. 
okay. Now we are getting into skills. What kind of skills should a founder have? Organizational skills, not electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, thermostats, probably yes, but more than that organizational. What else sir? Leadership skills. Are leaders born or made? Made. Entrepreneurs are also made. Good. Ajit, what are the skills? Robotic skills, not the main skill. Okay. Nidhi, what are the skills? Interpersonal, confidence. Engine, where is engineering coming in? Where is CPI coming in? Where is department coming in? I am just trying to, you know, I am saying all of this to break you out of a mindset. What is the biggest skill? In a business meeting, when the meeting is on, no. The business courtesy does demands that you pay attention, you know, you participate in the meeting. If you have something important, you can step out and check your phone. You are most welcome. Just tell me that you are stepping out. But tell Lalit, what is the biggest skill that you need? So now you understand why we are putting so much energy in team formation. What are the other skills that you need? Yes, probably yes. Timing, yes. So what's the second skill? How many of your leaders? A leader of what? School team, college team, football, cricket, swimming, club, events team. Okay, so an events team leader. Sir, madam, are you a leader? Do you think you are a leader? What's next? Product management, team management. See, number one is team assembly. After that is team management, selling, marketing, product design. There is no engineering because engineers you can hire. Remember one thing, you can never hire a founder. But if, if you offer 12 lakhs, 15 lakhs, 18 lakhs, you will have a queue of engineers who want to get the job. Founders who give 1 crore, 2 crores, you still can't hire them. And I have seen that, 2017 batch, rubric, indeed. 1.25 crores, 1.5 crores salaries. That's what, whatever it is, 100, 150,000 dollars. They could not hire. They wanted to be founders. But at 30 lakhs, <laughs> many people will, you can hire engineers. You cannot hire entrepreneurs. You have to build these skills. And these exercises will force you to build these skills. And it doesn't matter what is your designation. Project manager, second year, fourth year, first year, doesn't matter. AVP doesn't matter. A leader is a leader. Napoleon <laughs> conquered Austria at the age of 26. There are many people. Mark Zuckerberg, 19 years. Steve Jobs, 20 years. Bill Gates, 21 years. So 19, 20 are mature enough to lead if you decide that you want to lead. But if, I, if you decide that I want to sit for placement and CPI is the most important thing and I'll have PORs and have all of that, that's also fine. Nothing wrong with it. That's what 99% of the people will do. But if you want to be an entrepreneur, which is the subject of my class, you have to think different. So how do you start a startup? Sir, how do you start a startup? How, how will you do a startup? You've been an e-cell event manager. How do you start a startup? You have to get an idea. Okay, so you have to get an idea. So what do you think? You just saw all these skills, huh? If you're a leader, you don't need a mic. Okay, <laughs> if you're a leader, you don't need a crutch. If you are a leader, you don't have to sit like this. If you are a leader, you sit like a leader. You behave like a leader, you talk like a leader. So please, you need an idea. So start with Arkana. Is that enough? You need a validated idea. Who will validate? With whom? Yes, yes. And who are the customers? Professor? Boss? PIC? If you are in business, they are the faculty, they are the boss. He is the boss, they are the boss, they are the customer, they are the faculty. Alright, so let us look at how we, so what is the challenge of a startup? So this is a complex diagram, it is a concept diagram, so let me explain this to you. So there are several kinds of businesses, okay. There is a situation where you know your customer or you do not know the customer. IIT knows its customer, all the 14 lakh JE aspirants are the customer or potential customers. The 10,000 who get into IITs are the actual customer because you pay the fees or you know. They have enrolled. But India has 40 lakh engineering students at any time. So those are unknown customers. You don't know. IT doesn't know them. Nor does NIT. And the other part of his solution known, solution unknown. So let's look at some examples. Give me an example of where you know your customer. You're in business, you know your customer, but you don't know your solution. Which is the this you you know your customer, but you don't know your solution. Give me an example. Nishant, you should be facing it quite well. You know a lot of customers. They're all the all the corporates and the CSR teams. Are you sure about your solution? You don't know what they want. So a, cu a customer known and a solution unknown is that, you know, if you're selling Android, so Samsung knows, knows this customer, if you're using Samsung, 
okay, Samsung phones, they know their customers, yes or no. They know the customer because they've got the database. But let's see if they want to launch something new, uh, you know, a, a wrist phone, a phone that you can wear in your wrist. It's an unknown solution, okay. So Samsung knows the customer, but it doesn't know the solution which could be a phone, a wrist phone. Give me an example of where you know the customer and you know the solution. When you know the customer and you know the solution, think customers. So give me an example of a customer who you know and a solution who you know. Example, this is this one, this side. So if you look at Samsung, they've got this um, one, one UI 4.1. They know the solution, Android. They know the customer, which is the customer. They have to just upgrade the, you know, so get, and Google comes up with Android 13, Android 14, iOS 13, iOS 14, and so on iPhone, it keeps changing, okay, good. Now, give me an example of a, you have a solution, but you don't know the customer. Can it happen? You have a solution, you don't know the customer. Can it happen? You're doing e-antra, you know the solution, but you don't know, yeah, you've just developed something, but you don't know who will buy it. Does it, is it very common? I've done my PhD thesis, so I know my solution, but I don't know who will buy it. My boss has told me to raise funds because I can sell one, two, three, four, but now who's my customer? Is it very common? Happens, no? It happens. It's very common where you've developed a solution in a lab and then it's okay now, even faculty, etc., very illustrious people, you know, because they've done the research and they've developed something, they've developed it and then they're looking for a customer. But what happens if you don't know the customer, you don't know the solution? I, I know nothing. What happens then? Can there be a case? That is also called a startup. So when Uber started, they're not even clear what the solution was, they're not even clear. Forget Uber. I mean, if you take um, Zomato, they started as Foodie Bay, right? Because we did the Zomato case study last time. They had no idea who the customer was. They had no idea what the solution was. And all these startups came up, all these e-commerce, aggregators, book my show, make my trip. All of them started with, they had no idea, iPhone, iPod, okay? And that is why it's very, very important that you need the agility. How many of you did the psychometric test, the personality test, any of you did it? So many people, you know, almost become like robots. You know, there's a daily schedule. I have to run to this class, I have to run to that class, I have to go to office at 9 o'clock, I have to do this, I have to attend them, always busy. And they are not agile enough to think of new things. They are very comfortable. Someone tells them what to do. When you are young, Papa Mama tells you. When you are in coaching class, the coaching class people tell you. When you come to IIT, profs tell you. When you go to job, boss tells you. If you are in government, everything is by the rule book. But you're not agile enough to develop new ideas. And that's why you have to be agile. And if you're not agile, you will struggle. If you're used to always someone telling you what to do, papa, mama, coaching class, professors, boss, and most people are comfortable like that. But some people, they're the mavericks. But in our society, what happens if you're a maverick? I've had a student, huh, 2017. So they, two of them came to me and they said, you know, they want to do a gaming startup. So I asked them, you know, which year are you in? They said, we are in our seventh year in a BTEC because IIT gives you back, no, you can stay on for some more time. Seventh year. So I said, okay. Now it's not a lot because there's no space left, I guess. Then I asked them, what do you do? We play games. What level? They are in the world champion level of, you know, I think 2017 with some two or three games. They are the, the global league. They're in the top, I think, leaderboard, I think top two or three. And they wanted to do a gaming startup. Now, if you consider them as students, very bad students, you know, seventh year, lots of bags, hardly go to class. But if you look at them as entrepreneurs and mavericks, you need mavericks to change the world. And that's why it is in this class, in this topic, I'm looking for mavericks. I'm looking for people who are completely different. They, they play by the rules. But they change the rules. So if you're comfortable, someone always telling you, here's a theorem, here's a formula, here's a textbook, you know, you'll struggle in this course. There's no manual, nobody will tell you what to do. The only people who will tell you, who will tell you what to do? Who will tell you what to do? I will not tell you what to do. Shakti will not. So who is the only people who will tell you? Hmm? Course faculty. If you're still waiting for course faculty or a coaching class or parents to tell you, it's okay, but not okay for entrepreneurship. So get out of the paradigm. 
I will find the path. How many of you go for tracking? How many of you go snorkeling, mountaineering? How many of you are in martial arts, mixed martial arts, Thai boxing? It takes 10 years to be a, 10 to 12 years to be a black belt. Go and explore. I mean, guys are young. Life is so much, you know. Don't just go to class, come back, go to class, come back. Explore life. And then that's the risk. Because you don't know the customer, you don't know the solution, you don't know the business model. That's why it's a risk. So can you take risk? What's your risk appetite? Nishant, what's your risk appetite? High, low, medium? Rhetorical question, don't have to answer it. But reflect. Sir, what's your risk appetite? Rhetorical, don't have to answer. Medium. Good. Reflect. So how do you do a startup? You do it just like the way you do a lab experiment. But the lab will be, where's the lab? Leadership chahiye. It's okay to be like, you know, a film star or a politician here. I'm trying to break your mindset. So where do you start? You did a role play. Okay. Let's do one more role play. Very quick role play. Madam, come. So who wants to be the buyer and who wants to be the seller? I want to buy. You want to buy. Okay. Okay, so hello, I'm Shruti and uh, me and me along with my team, we're working on a sports tech uh, based product. So it's basically a portal uh, wherein uh, we'll connect sports enthusiasts with uh, coaches, sports facilities, basically anything they need to, you know, develop a sporting career. So uh, may I know, uh, do you play sports? Uh, do you play sports? No, but some of my friends play sports. Uh, yeah, so I assume that you must be familiar with people who play sports and you know uh, what their needs are. So what do you think? Uh, will this uh, product be beneficial to you or your friends or your siblings maybe? I didn't get exact idea what you are going to do. Okay, so like I'll explain another aspect. Okay, of so hold on. First of all, give them a big hand. Huh? So the key, key, key question is, was she in the sales mode? Was she in the sales mode or trying to discover the needs mode? So straight away moved into a sales pitch, right? So you never ask her what is your problem. That's the biggest mistake people make. I'm from eSell. So e sell my, you know, e summit is there. This is there. Can you please give me a donation? I'm from a DRF, PIH, whatever. We need the money. It is our internal strategy, and therefore, please give us the money. <laughs> we'll give you this, you know, building or this or that. We never asked the customer. You never asked her, madam, what's your problem? What's the biggest problem? That's what Steve Jobs is saying. If you look at it, okay. But thank you. So the first thing is that you have to understand the problem. What is the problem? She actually went to a sales mode without asking about the problem. When you go to a doctor, does the doctor first of all say, ah, here's the medicine you have to take. What does the doctor do? Ask the question, oh, blood pressure kya hai, ye kya hai, wo kya hai. Then they give you the medicine. If you are a doctor, you are almost prescribing in COVID drug without checking. You get the point, no? So you have to be a problem doctor. Can you ask people what is the problem? Can you do a very quick exercise, one minute exercise, please ask the person next door, sir or madam, what is the problem? Now you don't have to give away your deep, deep dark secrets, huh? no secrets are needed, just generally ask, what is the problem? Hindi mein hai to bolo ki aapka problem kya hai, but not in an offensive sense, huh? but in a nice polite way, what is it? Get used to asking ki boss aapka problem kya hai. All right, one minute, person next to each other. All right, guys, so we'll just stop, okay? This is just to give you an idea that you can ask someone in a very polite and nice way, Ki, sir, madam, do you have a problem? I don't think any of you ever in your life have asked someone else, what is your problem? And this will help you also in your personal life. Huh? How many of you have actually asked your father, mother, girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever, Ki, you know, what's your problem? Can I help you? How many of you have actually asked parents, girlfriend, boyfriend? Okay, good. 
do that with your customers and then automatically you can work backwards to create a startup. It's easy no, once you know the problem you solve the problem, but you don't ask the simple question ki boss what's your problem, we get into a sales pitch. So this is how, this is how the course is structured, you don't start on the circle number 3 which is a solution, you went off into a solution, you know I've got this sports portal, most IITians make that mistake. I've got my thesis, I've got this, I've got robotics, I've got DRF, I've got TIH and I've got a solution now I'm looking for a customer and trying to get into a sales mode without trying to understand key where is the market, who's the customer, where is the customer. So the methodology that I'll follow in this class, th by the way this is a Harvard research paper, okay, is we'll start with insights, okay. In the next 96 hours you will get insights and we'll come up with a problem and the problem is not that I have to raise money for DRF or I need 100,000 for or you know I need to get so many fellows out of TIH or something, no. You have to come up with a genuine problem that you face. Why do I talk about hours and not days? Because in our education system, we are used to thinking first you know class 1, class 2, 2 years coaching, first sem, second sem. So the language of students is a lot of semester and year. In startup, what is the, what is the time frame of a startup? Semesters, years, month is it, days is it, ideas are very common, remember whatever ideas you have, lot of people in Denmark is having the same idea, they are having it in Beijing, they are having it in Japan, they are having it in Tokyo, they are having it in Paris, they are having it in IIT Kharagpur, they are having it in NIT Suratkal, it is not that you know that the idea that you have, the NIT Suratkal or the Trichy or the Warangal guys will not have it, they have it, who moves faster? So the startup time frame is in hours, you think of an idea, you test it tonight, tomorrow you validate it, make a prototype, by day after you have a new idea. So start getting used to when is the mid sems before that, one day before I will do it, I said do not don't, don't do that. You can do last day preparation, but you know what, the IIT Kharagpur guys or the IIT Delhi guys or the Beijing guys or the Tokyo guys or the Denmark guys or the Stanford guys or the MIT guys will eat your lunch. Entrepreneurship is not about my CPI and my rank in class and my JE rank or this or that. You are in the big world, you are competing with Stanford and, and, and you know and big companies. We have got millions of dollars and many many R&D companies, so you have to move fast. So what is the time frame sir? 24 hours is fine, do not say one day and therefore in this boot camp all the assignments are 72 hours to 96 hour assignment, it is a mindset. You have to change your mind, it is all here. So that is why if you, if you look at this, this is the model and if you look at the course design, we will start with customer discovery, we will start with customer discovery tonight and we will come up with customer discovery, start thinking 96 hours and you cannot fall behind because if you fall behind one class or one assignment, your business plan is incomplete, you cannot move till you get the next this thing, okay. Heavy, let us take a chota sa discussion break. And let us get the teams organized, then we get into a bit more heavy stuff, okay. Now remember speed, huh? now we start getting into a little bit about understanding what is a customer problem. Remember what we said was we are starting with a problem, right, we are not starting with a solution, we are not starting I have got a robotics competition I have to sell it, I have to you know I have got a DRF and I have to sell raise money, I have got a sports portal and I have to raise money. Okay. So we are first starting with what is the customer problem, what is the customer problem? They have a burning need, excellent. Give me an example of a customer problem. You know eBay was started because lot of people are not good at negotiating, not everybody is an extrovert and good at selling and buying, right. So eBay offered an electronic uh, medium by which you could actually put up something on the portal and others could buy, so it took the negotiation out of it. Not everybody is good in dating, no, that is how Tinder was born. And we'll do a case study on Tinder maybe later on. It made it easier to date. There's no social stigma on dating. So there's always a need. And we'll do all of these case studies and book my show and make my trip and how how exactly you know those needs come up. So essentially, a problem is an unfulfilled need. And if you define the problem, you'll get to the solution very quickly. I'm a shy person. I can never go out on dating, but I want to go out on a date, Tinder. I do not want to go with all my friends or my wife and kids to the movie hall and find out there are no tickets. I want to look at whether tickets are there beforehand, book my show, 
book my shares in Indian startup. I want to go on a holiday, but I don't have money for hotels, Airbnb. I'm looking for a taxi here. I can't find it, but there's a taxi in the next lane, Ola and Uber. And you'll find that these are all practical cases, you know, getting a taxi, you know, that's how San Francisco getting a taxi in peak hours is a big problem. Uber came up. The person who founded Uber came to IIT Bombay in 2016, Kras Vinik. Please understand this, this is, a, this, this is absolutely nothing to do with engineering. But if you don't understand this, you'll make, um, you'll not be very good at startups. So there is something which is called the human needs. This is more psychology and this is nothing to do with engineering really. But you have to understand this if you want to do business. So all human beings have needs and the needs are at different levels. The lowest need is physio physiological needs, food, safety, house, shelter. Then you've got safety needs. Women, IIT Bombay is a safe campus, right? You don't want to be in a campus where you can get harassed or molested if you go out at night, right? Safety is a need. Social need. What's the social need? I want to be accepted. I want to be popular. I want to be liked, okay? Esteem need is prestige needs. Everyone wants to show off a little bit. I'll give you examples. And self-actualization is I want to be a noble being. Now let's look at all the examples, okay? So these are some definitions, but which I explained. If you look at bread, the bread on the left will cost 40 rupees per, you know, one half a dollar just for half a do US dollar is bread. But if you go to a five star restaurant on the right side, if you get that food, how much do you think it will cost? If you go to a Taj hotel or something, how much? Thousand, something four, five hundred. But it's, it's still the same. It's still bread is bread, but they meet several different needs. You will get a left pair of jeans in about two or three dollars. You go to diesel, it will cost you, you know, five hundred dollars to twenty five, thirty five thousand dollars. You go to an Armani t-shirt, few thousand. Armani X, AX will be cheaper. Armani Burberry t-shirts, $500, $35,000. A t-shirt is a t-shirt is a t-shirt. Which is the most expensive jeans in the world, Jasper? How, how much do you think is the most expensive jeans in the world? Five lakhs. Five lakhs, she said, go up $1.7 million. Because you know why? It had diamonds, like you were saying, it had diamonds in the, pocket, in the back pocket. It's called Secret Circus. What need is this fulfilling? status, esteem. Okay. So if you look at Apple iPhone 14 Pro Max and OnePlus 10 Pro, Pro, you can't tell the difference really. Technically, you can't tell the difference. Cameras are as good, speed is as good, performance is as good. Really can't tell the difference. Yet, Apple iPhone sells at twice the price. Why? Prestige. In fact, you know, this may sound some phone, but people who own an iPhone will probably just hold it like this because there's a logo. They'll hold it like this, you know, so you can see. It. <laughs> so that's called a prestige need. Let's look at some examples. What need is Facebook? Social needs. You post something and you look for how many likes and how many comments? Yes or no? Social need. What is Office 365 Microsoft? Productivity. Be becoming a better person, better worker. Better worker, not a better human being. What need is this? Self-actualization, right? Because you become a better you. So Google has actually made knowledge. M my time, if I'm in IT, I get a privilege. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're in MIT or IIT or DTU or wherever, everybody can get Google it. So knowledge is democracy. Everybody can be a better you. So which makes money? Does Google make money? Is valuable? Microsoft makes money. Facebook makes money. Apple makes money. Now you understand what needs they meet. The higher order you go, the more money you make because you meet higher order need. So if you're making a t-shirt, make sure that you've got some good branding on it. All of you are wearing brands. No, you're paying extra for it. What need does this meet? At least in, in, in you know, in Microsoft and all, when you, when you give money, you're getting something. Here you get nothing, you're just giving it away. So what need? Higher order. No higher order. Actually, Rotary people do a lot of good work. What about if you're in the army? Which need? Self-actualization, right? What about Mr. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi? Nelson Mandela. Nelson Mandela, everybody know? He was in jail for 25 years, fighting for freedom. And they became the president of and he got the Peace Prize, Nobel Peace Prize. What need was it driven by? Prestige need? He doesn't have to go to jail if he had prestige need, no? Mata Gandhi, if you gave him an Armani suit, do you think he would have worn the Armani suit? He did not have a need, no? Yes or no? So these people, are a, the soldiers are going to give up their life for the nation. I don't think any ITNs goes to the army anyway, fact. Huh? So you have to understand what is the need that you are meeting. Same, if you are in B2B, you have to understand the needs. This is important for you. There's also an hierarchy of needs, corporate hierarchy of needs. The first is sales. So don't go and tell a CEO, you are the CEO. Sir, I'm a robotics company. Will you buy some robots? Will you buy? 
But if I come and tell you, sir, I can grow your sales by 10 percent, you would think. If I come and say, oh, you know, I'm a drone company, will you buy, madam, if you're a CEO? But if I come and tell you, I can increase the profits by 10 percent, will you buy? I will, you will think. And the highest order need is a brand and the reputation. CEOs live and die in this hierarchy. I've also been a CEO. I ran a, you know, I've been on, as I said, I've been on boards at Asia level and Africa and all of this. And I've run companies. We live and die, at least I used to live and die by this hierarchy. Sales and all the sales guys will look after. Profits and all the finance guys will make sure. Capital and all the production guys will make sure. Capital and all. Shareholder value is a CEO. And brand and reputation, by God, it's a CEO. You have to make sure that the brand doesn't get damaged or the reputation doesn't get damaged. So you came to me and said, you know, I've got this, I'm an IT Bombay, I've got this robotics drone, hey, whoa. who cares? Please go and meet my production guy. So never go to market and look at, look at the most valuable brands. They're all meeting different kinds of needs. Amazon meets what kind of needs? It's very big, right? It's convenience plus it also gives you a lot of it's convenience, yeah? Cloud, AWS, yeah? Google, higher order need. Apple prestige needs, Microsoft productivity needs, Samsung high end, I mean, you know, reasonably high end. It's a mix of everything because Samsung has many products. Make my trip, convenience. Zomato, convenience. Zomato is a food delivery business in India. Book my show, convenience. There is another kind of startups. So, those of you who are really, the, the, so those are market driven startups. But there's also what is called a tech push startup. So, if any of you have got really solid cutting edge technology, then you can do a tech push startup. IIT typically doesn't do very well. India doesn't do very well with it. I'm sorry to say. But the people who do it very well is actually MIT. Okay, but let me give you an example. So, you know, if everybody knows Mr. Henry Ford, Ford Motors invented the cars, right? So, he said, if I went to the customer and asked, sir, what is your problem? Uh, someone who's riding a horse, they say, I need a faster horse. So, there's a limitation of market pool customer driven startups. Because startups, customers may not even know what they want. Okay. Because if, as I said, if, if, if I ask the horseman, what do you need? Bigger horse, faster horse. They would never, nobody would have told him cars. So there's also something called tech push. So if there are some really, really good students here who are doing really deep tech or faculty who are doing deep tech, then you can go down this path. And this is how old world changes to new world. The most important one is music. When I was there, I was your age. We used to have record players, records, benign. Then it became tape recorder. Then MP3 came. Then MP3 became in a CD. Then MP3 came in a DVD. Then MP3 got into the player. Then it became into a memory stick and a phone. And now it is all OTT or streaming. So all those categories are dead. And because these categories are dying, an IITian or someone from MIT or someone from Stanford or someone from NIT or or DTU can actually create the next generation if you have if you have the entrepreneurial traits. MIT, I would encourage all of you to look at MIT because MIT does a very good job of tech push. They really work and we are trying to, you know, we, we, we are trying to tie up with MIT, uh, Martin Trust Center and do some exchanges and all. But if you guys, any of you have any really good technology that you want to push out, okay, I suggest you go and look at MIT tech reviews. And these are some examples from 2014 onwards, okay. A lot of them, if you see here, they have been commercialized in that year. So, Apple Pay, Internet of DNA, all of this. Let's go to some of the new ones. This is 2019 or oh, that was 2016, 2017, pay, paying with your face, practical quantum, 360 degree selfie, hot solar cells, gene therapy 2.0. Your ITNs, if you are ITNs, you should be, should be talking this language. 3D metal printing that came up in 2018 in a big way. And, and metal printing is like titanium and all, huh? not just soft steel. Gut probe in a pill, this was 19. Carbon dioxide, this is pre-COVID, ECG on a risk. So now iPhones do have ECG on a risk, single lead. A lot of these are deep tech and they pushed it out and they're very good at it. 2020, anti-aging drugs, tiny AI, differential privacy, climate change attribution, hyper-personalized medicine, okay, custom. This is 2020, 21, messenger RNA vaccine, COVID vaccine, right, GPT-3. Hyper accurate positioning, remote everything, multi skill AI, TikTok, TikTok recommendation AI, green hydrogen. And this is 2022, malaria vaccine, which you don't have, by the way. Synthetic data for AI, so the data is not biased. This is what, as ITNs know, this is what you have been born to do. And anybody who is watching the video, NIT or any other colleges, it will be a shame if you come up with a Dhobi aggregator, you know, aggregator for Dhobis. 
please don't do that. I mean, you know, that would be a shame. So either you go for a scalable, large, market-driven startup, or you go for a tech push startup if you're very good. I don't know how many M techs and PhDs are here, Dr. Lalit. You are, you know, if you want to do this, do a tech push, but the tech push has to be like <laughs> really cutting edge. Or you go with national missions. There are a lot of national missions. So smart cities was very big in 2015 because government pu pu pumps in a lot of money. Then national climate exchange. In January, the India blockchain policy was given. In February, a startup raised hundred million dollars. Not a tight, not not a ITM. Pratik Gore. But you will not be able to do like this unless you're agile and unless, and you get obsessed with just the classroom part. You will not be able to do all of this. And there's no shame. In fact, we're going to have the NISP policy, even for IIT Bombay, where we allow students to do startups, course credits and course time and all of this. So if you're serious about a startup, the institute, and actually it's the India government policy that's coming up, and we're going to roll it out. ESL is going to roll it out, Prenna and the others, where you can go and do a startup and get a, some credit for it. But we can make any policy you want, but unless you have the courage and you are a maverick and you have the energy, okay, and you can take the risk, you will not be able to do it. If after this class, okay, and I'm okay if you feel so charged up in this class, that sir, you come here and do a few push-ups. That's okay. We'll have role plays to break out, of, to break you out of your mindset. If you want to sing, we will have singing classes in a context of startup, but you will have to get out of the mindset of a degree or a job and CPI and ranks and departments. That's the intent of my class. I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just saying that's the intent of my class. Then you have to assess your idea. It's very important that the idea, someone said that it has to be scalable. You have to assess your idea that it is, how, how big is the need, because there will be other competitors, right? So how big is the opportunity? And then you'll also have to also look at, can you do something different from the competitors? There are many sports portals. And anything that is on Google and YouTube is not a good idea. Anything which is on Amazon and Alibaba, Please don't come with something which is available at Alibaba at one dollar. Please don't come and say, okay, you know, Google it. In in there is no scope in startup, in Google's and YouTube's and Alibaba's and Amazon. If you present an idea, the first thing the faculty or investor will do is do a Google search, Alibaba search, YouTube search, and they have tracking machines, and they will know, know whether you are just copying something from Google or YouTube. Don't do that. You're wasting your time. You're cheating yourself. So we start with a assignment number three. So now you are starting with what is a customer product. Don't start with the solution. I got a robotics competition which I want to scale up. That's a solution. I want to, I've got DRF, I have to raise this thing. I've got TIH, I have to, forget all of that. Try to identify something, a need in the market. So you first start with some customer insights. How do you get customer insight? Every team has to talk to at least 25 customers in the first round, you'll talk 25 for the next assignment, 25 for the next assignment. And who can the, can the customers be? So for you, it could be alums, it could be CSR, okay. For you, it could be other incubators, colleges, schools, and whichever domain you're looking for, talk to people. If your profile, if your customer profile is teens, talk to your brother, sister, cousins. If your profile is age limit 20 to 30, talk to yourself. You can talk to him, him, him. This class also has customers. Huh? You can talk to do talk to people in this class itself. If you are doing gymming at sports portal, no, everybody here is a he's a customer except me. Sports port portal, if you are doing, but it has to be something disruptive. Huh? It cannot be just. So you get the customer insights and then look at what are the options that the customer has. Robotics, they may have many options. There may be many educational options. For CSR funds, there may be 1 million NGOs. So what is it that you are, the, you know, what is the customer unmet need of a alum or a CSR company? And what is the need, what is the market need for whatever you're trying to do in TIH? Because TIH itself is not a solution, nor is IoT and IOE, that's a government definition. But who wants IoT, IOE for what? Which segment, agri-tech, ed-tech, defense, telecom, whatever it is banks so please try and talk to at least 25 customers then if you if you can then look at this the the columns on the right you'll come up with a the problem they will tell you what the problem is what's the problem what's the problem what's the problem what is the problem if you call up some of the um, some of the incubators or schools or colleges 
ask them what the problem is. Don't tell them what your solution is. Ask them what the problem is. But don't come up with something which is like really far out because it will take a lot of startup team effort. So the, the one on the right is what is the customer benefit? If I solve it, what is the benefit that the customer has? But then, you know, if it's too difficult for the team, you'll not be able to do it. Reach Sheryl Sandberg, Facebook CEO, or Indra Nui, and see how they, when they speak, everybody listens. Or look at Kamala Harris, or look at Nikki Haley, or look at Smithy Irani, and see how they speak. When they speak, people listen. Whoever is your role model, even Alia Bhatt is fine. <laughs> but see how this gives speech delivery. Can you do that? Just learn. So what you have to also do is, if, if how big is the price? If you crack that startup, what is the price for the team? And then one of the things that you have to do is customer interviews. So I like to see, I, I hit PowerPoints. I'll give, an, I'll give an example, okay? But what is the evidence? Pictures, photos, videos, interviews. Let me give you an example so you understand. So this was done in 2018, okay? by a team which used to call itself Office Anywhere. Remember, there was not COVID. There was no COVID that time. And then look at the insights. Bomba look at You can read it yourself. Mumbai has very heavy traffic. Parking is a big problem. Drivers are very expensive. So these are the insights that they got. What are the current options? Buses, trains, meters, meter taxis, etc., etc. Right? And then what was the un unmet need? You can go, go out that way. Yeah. Okay? Crowded, not point to point. So these are all the unmet needs. And then they said, look, if you can solve a problem, then the customer base is 2 crore Mumbaikas. And you can see on the right, the benefit is very high. Remember, this was pre-COVID. Now everybody got used to Zoom, but this is what happened. What is the effort needed? High, high, high. Reward is very high. And they came up with a concept of office anywhere. And look at all the pictures that they took. Crowded buses, you know, trains. You are lucky you are sitting in a very nice campus. Very privileged. But not everybody is. And then here are the customer interviews. They, they, they talk to a VP of HR, the VP of sales and employees. Monsoons are a nightmare. VP HR said productivity drops. So this is an example of a team which did the office anywhere concept. Employees can work from anywhere. And they had four, four, foresaw without knowing that COVID, but today this has become a reality. So this is an example of where they started with nothing and they came up with a concept called office anywhere, which today at four years down the line is very common, except they could not think of Zoom calls and all. But the Zoom startup thought of Zoom, clear? So this lecture will be posted in PDF form in Moodle. The PowerPoint will be there. The resource that we have, as I said, I suggest that you choose problems in the area of healthcare and well-being. Anybody who does even specially able, disabled, blind, deaf, you know, you know, anybody who is choosing problems in the area of well-being and healthcare, Dr. Lalit will be your domain expert. Any, I also suggest you work in the area of connected, connected communities or smart cities where Shakti and then we have got two people from TIH itself. Okay. I hope that in this class, normally the hit rate in our, my, my class the last seven years has been we get two teams who, who actually go to the market and raise money. Two to three teams actually go to the market. Okay. Last seven years, we've got 44 startups and I think in the last seven years about maybe 20 was has been in my class several teams disband and some come up with a plan but for me remember even if we get two good teams which is going out and doing a startup and raising a million dollar two million dollar getting a valuation of 10 crores 20 crores for me my class is worth it so this class is not about numbers this class is about impact and this class is about thinking big and this class is about behaving like Bill Gates or Steve Jobs or Mr. Mukesh Ambani or Bhavish Agarwal. And I'm 100% sure some of you will and I'm okay even if two, three of you, my class, you know, we, everybody won't be a starter, won't be an entrepreneur. But even if you, Burgess of you, sir, or you, madam, okay, be, become, a, you know, something like a Bhavish or Naika, the lady who did Naika. If you become like a Nike founder or you become like any of the founders, the hit rate is about that. The hit rate is about 2 to 3 percent. But that's the IIT hit rate. Okay. So even in this class, even if we get and we will over invest. So in terms of clinics, um, Dr. Lalit will support all the health and good, good well-being. 
Shakti will support domain wise all the connectivities and everything. Um, DRF, e Antra and TIH, I, I will support. Okay.